It's been about one week since President Biden took executive action to restrict the asylum system. Since then, the ACLU has filed a lawsuit charging that the Biden administration has broken asylum law. To put both in perspective, we wanted to step back and look at the U.S. immigration system, particularly the treatment of those who seek asylum. U.S. refugee and asylum system was created in response to the World, to the world War II refugee crisis. Millions of people had lost their homes in the destruction, and millions more Jewish Europeans needed a place to go. Over the years, the system has been modified several times, and it currently provides protections to foreigners fleeing persecution based on certain groups, such as their religion and their political views. Today, there is a quota system in place, limiting the number of refugees allowed into the U.S. each year, but there is no cap for the asylum system, which has become massively backlogged. CBS News immigration and politics reporter Camila Montoya Galvez joins me now with more on the current state of the asylum system in the United States. Hi, John. A lot of the conversation on the immigration system starts at the U.S.-Mexico border, so let's begin with that. Over the last three years, the number of times U.S. Customs and Border Protection has encountered migrants has reached record levels. Included in those figures are encounters at official border crossings and the number of people illegally entering the U.S. Repeat border crossings are also included in these metrics. So when a migrant is encountered, there are several options for what happens next. Some people are deported, expelled, or returned to their home countries or Mexico. About 4.3 million people over the last three fiscal years have been deported or expelled from the U.S. Generally speaking, however, migrants who claim asylum can do so if they're physically on American soil. For those who do claim asylum, they have to wait for the U.S. to make that decision and they are generally allowed to stay here pending that review. Over the past three years, U.S. Customs and Border Protection has released 3.2 million people. When someone is released, John, they are not allowed to work here legally until six months after they formally apply for asylum. They're also not eligible for federal benefits, but may have limited access to social services depending on where in the country they live in. There are currently around 3.7 million people with pending immigration court cases, and 1.3 million of them have already formally applied for asylum. If someone is granted asylum, they immediately become a legal resident in the U.S. and are allowed to begin the process towards American citizenship. People who lose their cases are supposed to be deported from the U.S., but it gets a lot more complicated than that. And that is because the number of people requesting asylum has soared as the number of encounters at the border has also grown. And has the time to make that decision has also grown. That time has also grown. And right now, the average wait time for asylum hearings is around four years. And then there's a longer wait for an actual decision, which leaves migrants in limbo for years. But in the meantime, many of them can work in the U.S., even if they won't ultimately qualify for asylum, which, again, is only for people fleeing persecution, not economic misfortune. And finally, there's another category of migrants that we often hear about in the news, the so-called gotaways. These are migrants that the Department of Homeland Security defines as people who evaded Border Patrol apprehension but were detected on cameras or sensors. Over the past three fiscal years, that number has increased, as you can see. These migrants are in a legal gray area without any status, and so they are not eligible for jobs and are at risk of being deported if they are apprehended here in the U.S., John. Excellent work, Camillo. So how did this system get so broken? And when I ask that, I'm really asking about the asylum system, right? Yes, you are. The U.S. asylum system, John, simply put, was never designed or built to address and accommodate the extraordinary migration flows that we have seen over the past three years. Millions of people have been entering the U.S. across the U.S.-Mexico border over the past three years, and many of them are claiming asylum under our laws. And that is a seismic shift because, yes, illegal crossings were also high in the early 2000s and in the 90s, but many of those migrants were Mexican men looking for work who were not applying for asylum, and many of them were sneaking into the country and were not entering the system. Right now, many families, adults, and unaccompanied children are actively looking for federal agents, John, to begin the asylum system. But that process is massively backlogged, as you mentioned. And legally speaking, and also operationally speaking, it is not meant to address the needs of many of these migrants. Why do I say legally in addition to operationally? Because ultimately, 
These migrants may have very sympathetic cases and may be fleeing very desperate circumstances, but many of them will not meet the very high legal threshold, John, that is needed to win asylum. One of the things that I learned was when you described the, what happened in the 90s and early 2000s, those were the gotaways that you That's described right. in your... That's right. And, and this new situation is different. Thank yes. you for, for helping me understand those kind of two big categories. Now, let me ask you about the ACLU before we go away. They have sued the Biden administration right. saying that this new order restricting asylum is breaking asylum law. What can you tell me about what's going on there? Well, the Biden administration last week issued a partial ban on asylum claims. People who cross between ports of entry at the border are now banned from asylum. There are certain exceptions, including for unaccompanied children, but that is the general rule. If you cross into the U.S. illegally, you're no longer eligible for asylum, and you can be quickly deported. The ACLU says that that violates U.S. asylum law because for many years that has been interpreted to mean that if you are here on American soil, John, you can request asylum, even importantly, if you enter the country illegally. The ACLU importantly sued over a very similar Trump administration regulation, and it was successful in convincing federal courts to block it. And they tell me that this is nearly identical to that regulation. But obviously, only time will tell if the courts agree with them. Camila Montoya-Galvez, walking us through the thicket of all of this so well. Thank you so Thanks, much, Camilla. John.